Hello everyone and welcome to a wonderful cold and rainy spring day here in Bavaria, Germany. And this is the new Volkswagen ID4 Pro 2024. I'm going to show you every changes that they did with the new version, the new motor, new software, new hardware and everything. But I'm going to also make a very bold statement. In my opinion, this is the best comfortable electric SUV right now. In here now we have rear wheel drive with the new APP 550 motor, same motor that the ID7 has as well. 210 kilowatt, 286 horsepower and it should be more efficient than the old motor which had less power. The exterior hasn't changed much. To be honest, I don't know if anything has changed except I know that the badge on the side door is gone where it said before Pure Pro or GTX. The big changes are under the hood. It's the new hardware that controls the software and the car and we're gonna look at it in detail. If you like to have an easy monthly overview of all of your costs for your EV, if you like to see what your charging habit is, how much do you charge AC and DC, where do you drive, what was your consumption on those drives, you can see that with Tronity. Tronity you can use via the app or with the browser. Many EVs can use the app, it's a really great thing. And there's also a 100% text compliant driver's logbook, which is awesome if you need that for your work. My viewers get 25% off if they use the link in the description below or when they register with the app just use the code battery life huh in the interior not a lot has changed except for the buttons on the steering wheel the layout of the gear selector or and the, the wipers before the gear selector was on the cockpit now it's an extra thing like in the id7 and the id bus and because of that the wiper control had to move to the left and you don't have that much control since this stock is also there for the indicator so when you wanna you only have two settings now for your sensitivity for your rain sensor and the wiper in the rear is now a button above here which is a bit clumsy i don't like it that much Let's do the steering wheel first on the left uh, bottom here. We have now the volume control and on the right we have next or previous song. Um, above here we have all of the control for the cruise control. This is now different. Uh, before we had a travel assist on and off. Travel assist is the self steering from Volkswagen. Now we have a mode button which goes through the speed limiter, adaptive cruise control and travel assist. So when you are in travel assist and when you go to adaptive cruise control you have to press the button a few times to go back. So you go through the different uh, modes. But it's not like you suddenly have the speed limiter on and it's totally weird. It really goes over that and then selects it. It works really well. On the right we have our view for our cockpit and a head-up display. And we have our voice control, voice command. And now we have the steering wheel heater button on the steering wheel which is really awesome. The view of your cockpit you do with just pressing left and right you can focus on the assist system everything or on your driving data or when you press again then you have your root guidance in here and when you want to control the head-up display you need the buttons uh, up and down where when you press up it says you can now operate the head-up display and then your left and right button changes the view of your head-up display and if you go down you now back to you can now operate the instrument cluster the new display has no buttons underneath like i said before it was there was climate assist uh, drive mode and park that's all gone it's now implemented in the screen 
but we have the same buttons before where we have uh, off or music mute and pause uh, we have your you have your temperature control for the driver and the passenger and your volume control and these buttons are now illuminated before they couldn't be illuminated because of the gesture control and the gesture control is now gone what is amazing with the new screen and the new ID software 4.0 is that underneath here you have all of your climate. That means your temperature, get, get into climate, three buttons that you can customize for yourself. Then you have your seat, everything in here so you can get to your seat settings right away. And seat heater is also here with one button. So for the steering wheel heater and the seat heater, you don't have to go in any menu. It's right there, which is awesome. You can get into your climate here and change settings but like I said you have three buttons down here when you press long you can now use different buttons down here which are important to you that you change a lot so you don't have to go to the menu all the time up here you have four buttons that you can change as well I have here Spotify assist system drive mode and on Android Auto but you can have others in here which are maybe more important to you on the left here is your vehicle uh, menu where you also can have six different uh, shortcuts to get to your roof or to change your trip data, turn on the uh, head up display or off and all other things, auto hold, everything you want to do. And with the button up here you always get to your settings for your car. The eight little things here are all of your apps that you have for the car, so all of your settings that you want. The drive mode is now here an extra button. You still have the normal drive modes, eco, comfort, sport and individual. And in, in individual, if you have DCC, the dynamic chassis control, you can set your suspension to be more comfortable or to be more sporty and this in many little levels. So if you say it's a tiny bit too sporty, you can just go back a tiny bit. You have for different things of your car, different settings, comfort and sport, like your steering, your drive, exterior engine sound, so the pet pedestrian warning sound can be as it was before or when you put it in sport it sounds like a Porsche Taycan and the important thing for me the adaptive cruise control also has a settings eco comfort and sport this means when you have adaptive cruise control on this will set the power that the car uses when there is a change in speed so if the car in front of you is braking or accelerating the id4 is then accelerating or braking in a different way either in eco where it does it slowly in comfort a bit more power in sport very powerful Assist system. This is important because we have, as before, our graphic here or in a list. And for a few years now, when you buy a new car, it has to have lane assist, lane keeping uh, system on every time you start the car and still the same when you get into this car, every time you put it into drive, lane assist is on. But you can turn it off very quickly. And since in ID software the new EU regulation is implemented, also the new thing is in here, the speed warning. When you have speed warning on, and for example here it's speed limit of 30, if I drive 31 for a few seconds you get a warning. If you go under it and go above it again, it will warn you again. But you can turn that off as well. But I'm going to keep it off, except for the lane assist, so we can listen to it and you can hear what it sounds like. The two major th new things in this car is first the navigation. In the navigation you still have, as before, the edge charging stops automatically. Um, and you can say at what range you want to arrive at the destination and what uh, at the charging stops and that it uses recharge. This is the same but the calculation of those chargers is now completely different. Before it was all about the range. You had 300 kilometers of range. Your destination was 250 kilometers away. Even though it was highway it said you will arrive it's fine. Now <laughs> it knows the car, it knows where you're driving, it knows your driving style, it knows the weather, it knows if it goes uphill or downhill and would all implement this in the calculations. So it will know, hey, I know you drive a bit more sporty and this is on the highway, even though you have enough range to get there, I know that the consumption will be higher, so I'm uh, planning a charging stop there. The only thing what it doesn't do yet, which I would love, is that 
at the choosing of the charger. It chooses 150 kilowatt charger, which is okay, but I would prefer if I can select, please choose a, choose a 200 kilowatt or 300 kilowatt charger. And I would be would be amazing if it would be uh, if I could select that it should uh, use a charger that is in the WeCharge Plus account, for example, because a Volkswagen Partner charger is then cheaper. That would be amazing. And of course, would be incredible if I could select that there should be more charging stalls so not just one charger it can see if the charger is occupied or broken and then it won't use it but it would be nice if I can select please use a charger where there are four or six charging stalls so if I get there I don't have to worry that it will be occupied I will have a charger the other big new implementation is charging a charging menu is a bit different. You still have your normal charge limit and you have your charging location where at home you can do planned charging. So you can tell it, please charge tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. It should be at 100% and then you won't charge right away to 100%. It will do it in the morning. So at 6.30 you are at 100% so the battery doesn't stay at that state of charge too long, which is awesome. But the new amazing feature with ID Software 4.0 is the battery heating. Before ID because they always had a battery heater but it was automatic so when your battery was very very cold in the winter under zero degrees the battery was heated up to a certain temperature but for optimal charging the MEB platform battery has to be at around 25 degrees Celsius and it didn't heat it up to that because it also takes a lot of energy and if you're just driving and you don't want to charge why would it be heated up to that temperature but now you have amazing control over it number one is in the navigation so when you go into navigation and your route options you now have rapid charging optimization with active route guidance when you turn that on and you navigate to a charger it will heat up the battery that when you arrive at that charger it will be perfect temperature for charging important here is it won't be heating up the battery with full power and as fast as possible no it will be slow heating that it notices ah you're almost there i heat it up with this much power that exactly when you arrive you are at the temperature so no energy is wasted but you can also do it manually now which is amazing like I said, the battery needs 25 degrees Celsius to be perfect for charging. And as you see right now with this graph and the numbers, it's not perfect temperature right now. I would say it's around 12 degrees. I measured this, by the way, with my ID7. There's a video about that. And it tells me at this state of charge, um, with this temperature, I can charge right now with 33 kilowatt. But if I heat it up, which takes 40 minutes, it can charge with 57 kilowatt and I can just start it with this button. Now it's not heating because the heating doesn't work when you're not in gear. So when you just park here, the, the battery heating won't do anything. It has to be in drive. Then it will start battery heating. 40 minutes sounds like a very long time, but you also have to think a 77 kilowatt hour battery, 82 kilowatt hours that we have here, weighs 400 to 500 kilograms. And to heat it up with a six kilowatt uh, battery heater, that takes a while. It's a lot of metal and stuff and a heavy thing to be heated up. It just takes some time. But I think now let's drive a bit and enjoy the 210 kilowatt rear wheel drive motor. And sadly, we still have the welcome screen with the OK button for the user. That's still there. Nothing has changed here. Let's get some heat in here. I'm cold. You have that uh, seatbelt uh, tightening when you drive on. That's on the all new cars. That's awesome. That's the warning sound. The ID4 is as comfortable as it always was. Very comfortable, amazing steering. Uh, yes, you feel bumps and stuff, of course. There's always a limit, but it's extremely comfortable. I love it a lot. The cruise control, like I said, very simple. You press set at your speed and then with the haptic feedback buttons that a lot of people don't like. I have no problem with it. You can either swipe or press light or hard for one kilometers an hour change or 10. And then 
like now self-steering travel assist is on but you can switch to just normal uh, adaptive cruise control with the mode button so when you switch it you get the display and then you press it and then it goes first into adaptive cruise control and then in the speed limiter and it just does it I can see in a head-up display wonderful the, the car in front of me distance I can stop it and I can pass because there are other cars but I can complain that he's driving 80 on the country road where there is 100 <laughs> yeah it's also good in the corners it's not a sporty car it's not the, uh, doesn't have immense amount of power and is amazing in corners but it's incredibly good for what it is as an SUV I love it a lot the travel assist works really really well on the country road there are a few things like here where there's weird lines and it steers in a, in a bit of a weird way but usually it's really amazing even on the country road which is unusual uh, for a lot of EVs on the highway it's then perfect you even have auto lane change where with the sensors it looks if there's a car beside uh, and it or can it go out and it will show you an arrow that it's uh, auto lane change is available and you just put the indicator on and then it will steer itself outside and also then on the way in as well Dynamic chassis control has been improved even more. The changes, slight changes in driving are being done way more often so it can adapt to the ground that you drive on and the speed and the corner and everything and oh he wants it comfy so that the dampers have to be like this and so on and it's awesome. And that's something I have to say. If you are in the market for an ID4 don't take the old version, take the new one. The new one has so much, so many things that are just way better and make the car amazing than what the old car had. There's just tiny little negative things like the wiper control, I'm not the fan of that, but the rest is better than it was in the old car. So go for that. Now let's measure the acceleration. We have more power from 150 uh, up to 210 kilowatt we have in this car. Uh, we're gonna measure, measure it with draggy GPS device here on the car. Ooh, sport mode. <laughs> 6.42 seconds but as always this stretch is a bit downhill it doesn't like it Six point six seven seconds and it's verified that's our number that we get one thing that I noticed in this car, and it's, it's very interesting, in my ID7, with the new motor, the same motor that is in here, it feels like the region is a bit stronger than it was in my ID3. In the ID4, with the old motor, the region was, uh, felt weaker than in my ID3 because it was the same motor but a heavier car, bigger battery. But my ID7 feels like there's more regenerative braking than it is in here. And I don't know why. It just feels like it. I haven't measured it. I don't have both cars uh, driving beside each other with the same speed and we both go off the accelerator pedal and see what the region is. Out the barn. Hundred and thirty on the highway, noise level in here. 
I think my ID7 is quieter, but also makes sense. But it's comfortable, quiet, extremely stable, and that's what a car in my opinion should be this is what you want when you drive on the highway you have to drive a few hundred kilometers you want it comfy quiet and stable that you don't have to hold the steering wheel like crazy when there's a little bump or when you go into a corner at 150 it feels the same way the car is not acting differently uh, it's just a bit louder in here That's the top speed. It shows 183 on the speedometer, which is 184, which is 180 GPS. And it's still stable even here in the corner. It's not, like I said, extremely sporty. So when there's a bit of more of a corner, uh, it doesn't feel as safe and comfortable as a sporty car that's normal. What I like is that the 210 kilowatt motor now offers the power that the car sh should have always had. The 150 kilowatt motor before was a bit weak for this big and heavy car. This is better. If you want me, if you want me, follow. <laughs> oh God! If you want to follow me on Instagram, Battery Life One, and if you want to support the channel, I appreciate it very much. There's a Patreon link in the description below and here on YouTube there's also channel membership. But that, oh, <laughs> maybe not. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.